Hello and welcome to this video in which I discuss the M plus syntax and output for a multi-level regression analysis. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation models, factor analysis, multi-level analysis, or latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as workshops that I teach for Quantfish. In this video, I want to walk you through the M plus syntax and output file for a random coefficient regression model that we also sometimes call a multi-level model or a hierarchical linear model. So this is a regression analysis for two-level data, for cluster data, where we have a level one predictor and also a level two predictor. So first of all, how is this specified in M plus? Let's take a look at our syntax here. And so you can see that um, the first command after the data file command is the define command. And this is used here to center the level one predictor variable x. You can see x is here in the variable names list and x is a level one predictor. We have an outcome variable y. We have a cluster or grouping variable that indicates the two level structure and we have a level two predictor w. And so with the define command, we center x at the group mean in this case. Another option would be grand mean centering. And so this depends on various factors, whether you would use group mean centering or grand mean centering. And that's not a topic that I'm going to talk about here in great detail, because that's a topic on its own here. So to say, just notice that in this case, group mean centering of X was selected, but grand mean centering is also available in M plus using the define option. Notice that in the use variables command, we selected y, x, and w, the three variables that are used in the multi-level analysis. y is the outcome, x is the level one predictor, and w again is the level two predictor. Furthermore, we're telling M plus that the cluster variable here is c, so that M plus knows what, or based on which variable the groups are defined, and then also so that M plus can figure out which are level one variables, which are level two variables, does it all make sense? With the within command, we define X to be a purely level one predictor. So a variable that only plays a role at the within groups level, for example, within school classes, if this were a design with students nested within school classes, then X would be a, an individual level um, predictor variable, for example, individual student achievement or other individual student variables. Between specifies which variables are between level or level two predictors in M plus. In this case, that's W. So that would be in the school class example, a variable that plays a role, a role at the level of school classes, for example, a variable related to the class climate or teacher related variable. So something that does not vary from student to student within the same class, but that applies to all students in a given class. So that would be a level one predictor, uh, sorry, a level two predictor where there's no variation at the within level within the groups, but there is potential variation between the clusters or between the groups, in that case, the school classes. Furthermore, in M plus, when we use a random coefficient model with random slopes, in addition to random intercepts, we have to choose the analysis option type equals two level random. So as soon as you have random slopes, you have to have that random keyword here as well. When you have a model that only has random intercepts, you don't need to specify two level random. In that case, you would um, be good just specifying type equals two level without the random keyword. But in this case, we also have a random slope in our model. 
as we can see here, when we go to the model statement, you can see that first of all, I defined the model at level one, the within groups or within school class level. And I specified that at the within level, the dependent variable or outcome variable y is regressed on x, our level one predictor, and that the slope for the regression of y on x is a random coefficient, or in terms of m plus, it's a latent variable that has a variance and a mean at level two or at the between level. And so the way that we specify a random slope is by using this ver vertical bar symbol here. And then before the vertical bar symbol that comes before the regression, we provide a label of our choice for the random slope parameter. In this case, I called it beta 1j in line with frequently used notation for hierarchical linear models that you can find in the literature, but you really could just also call it slope or s or whatever you like. And so then that name can be used in the specification at the between level where we can tell m plus then, for example, what we want to do with this slope. Do we want to um, regress the slope on a level two predictor, for example, and so on. Then next is the between level or level two specification where we regress y on w. So that's our um, that's our level two predictor w. And so specifically when you refer to the name of the outcome variable at level two in M plus at the between level, then that means you're referring to the random intercept from level one. So M plus automatically includes a random intercept even if we don't explicitly specify that here in our within specification we didn't explicitly say please give me a random intercept for that regression but it's automatically included and the way m plus refers to it at level two is simply by using the name of the outcome variable from level one. So that's the random intercept. And so here with this statement, y on w, we're regressing the intercept of the level one regression, which is a random coefficient on the level two predictor w. So differences in intercepts between school classes can now be explained by w potentially if w is related to the to those differences in the intercepts of the level one regression furthermore we are also regressing the random slope on w in this case so this is um, by including the statement beta 1j on w we're regressing the slope that was defined here on our level two covariate or the level two predictor. So in this model, both the intercept and the slope are random coefficients and both the intercept and slope are regressed on the level two predictor W. And then lastly, we also include a covariance between the residuals. So y is the intercept and beta 1j is the slope. And those are dependent variables at level two. They are regressed on w. And so there's some residual variation in y and in beta 1j. And so that could be correlated. So there could be a covariance between the residuals. And so this wouldn't be estimated in M plus by default. So if we wanted to estimate that residual covariance, then we have to include that statement Y with beta 1J to allow the residual term for the intercept and the residual term for the slope to be correlated. And then Samstat requests the sample statistics for both within and between when you have chosen the option type two level in M plus. In this analysis, we have 503 observations. We can see here that our observed dependent variable is Y. The observed independent variables are X and W. A continuous latent variable is the random slope beta 1J that we defined. And we have C as the cluster variable. We have X as a purely within or level one predictor variable. We have W as a purely between or level two predictor variable 
and we centered X at the group meet. So you can see that M plus provides you with a nice summary of your specification and variables. And then it tells you what the default estimator was that was used here. It's robust maximum likelihood estimation. When we scroll down a little bit, we can see in the summary of data that we had 35 clusters, in this case 30, 30, 30, 34 clusters. So in this case, those were 34 school classes. The average cluster size was about 15, so about 15 students per class. And you can see that the intra-class correlation for the Y variable was very substantial, 0.45. So that's a very strong intra-class correlation showing that multi-level modeling here is warranted. So there's a lot of variance at the between level, a lot of variance between school classes in the outcome variable. So definitely a situation where multi-level modeling could make sense because there is clearly a dependency of the observations on school class and some of that variance at level two, some of that between school class variation may be explained by the covariate, the level two predictor W. So let's take a look at the sample statistics. You can see that at the within level, or level one, and plus does not give the means. The means are given for the between level but it does give the within level covariance matrix. You can see those are the variances and covariances at level one. Obviously W does not covary with anything at level one because W is a level two predictor. We also get the correlation between Y and X at the within level, which is here pretty substantial 0.65. And then at the between level and plus estimates the means of y and w you can see the mean of x is zero x is centered so there's no mean here and then the covariances are given between y and w obviously not between y and x because x is purely a level one predictor and so but here you have the covariance between y and w at level two which corresponds to a very sizable correlation of 0.882 so you can see that there's a strong correlation between y and the level two uh, predictor at the between level Next, we should check that the model estimation terminated normally, meaning that there wasn't any kind of estimation problem for our multi-level model, no kind of warning message. And you can see in this case here, no such thing appeared. So it looks like the analysis worked just fine. We can then check the number of free parameters. We can look at the log likelihood and information criteria. For example, when we want to, if we wanted to compare different models, we could use, for example, the AIC to compare models with different um, specifications. So next are the model results, so the parameter estimates, and you can see that we get at the within level only one parameter is estimated at level one, and that's the residual variance for Y, so that's the level one error or level one residual variance, which is estimated to be 14.633. All other parameters are at level two because we have random coefficients in the regression at level one. And so there's not really a coefficient that is estimated for the level one regression of Y on X because both the intercept um, beta zero and the slope beta one, they're both random coefficients with a mean and variance estimated at level two. And so therefore there's no other parameter here given under within level other than the residual variance for Y. At the between level then we have the coefficient for the regression of the random slope on W. And you can see that um, coefficient is statistically significant at the 0.05 level. When we look at the last column where you find the two-tailed p-value, you can see that that regression slope coefficient for the regression of the random slope on W is statistically significant. So this means that W explains some of the variation in the level one slope 
across school classes. So not all the slopes of the regression of y on x are the same across school classes. There's some variation and so w accounts for some of that variation as is shown by the significant coefficient here. Also w accounts for some of the variation in intercepts across school classes. You can see that that coefficient here for the regression of the y-intercept on w is also statistically significant. So this means that the intercepts of the level 1 regressions of y on x differ across school classes and that w can explain some of that uh, variation in those intercepts across school classes. So W is related to both the intercept and the slope of the, this random coefficient regression. So it's a significant level 2 predictor of both intercept and slope. You can see that the residual covariance between the intercept and slope is not statistically significant. The p-value here is 0.291, so there's no significant residual association between intercept and slope after we account for the W level 2 predictor. And then furthermore, those level 2 regressions also have an intercept term because here both the intercept and the slope are regressed on W and in that uh, regression there's not just a slope gamma uh, for um, the slope but there's also an um, intercept for each of those and so those are given here so that's to so say the um, intercept term for the level 2 regression here of the intercept and that's the intercept for the level 2 regression of the slope on w and then also there are residual variances you can see that there's some residual variation in the intercept between school classes such that W cannot explain variation in the intercepts fully. However, there's very little residual variation in the slopes. Uh, after accounting for W, you can see that this is a very small number, almost exactly zero, and it's not significant. So there's not much variance left in the slope after accounting for W. So that's what you get in M plus for a random coefficient regression analysis for a two-level regression model with a level one predictor and a level two predictor and random intercepts and random slopes where both the random intercepts and the random slope uh, so is uh, regressed on a level two predictor. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and leave a comment if you like in the comment section. I'll see you next time.